Now that we understand some terminology about three-dimensional shapes, it's, on, it's time to move on to some surface area and area of shapes. The first thing we need to do is understand just the parts of what polyhedras have. First off, we have a lateral face. The lateral face would be this pink area here. The lateral face would be any face which would not be the base. In this picture, you can notice that we have the green shaded in area. That would be the base. It's parallel to the other object that has the same shape, same size on the other end. And therefore, those are called the bases. What's left behind would be called the lateral faces. Next, we have the lateral edges. A lateral edge is simply the edges that make up the lateral faces, the lateral edge. And then last, we have the base, which I've already discussed, is this green object here. But there's actually two of them. There's also another base that's behind back over here. So that's the parts of the polyhedra. Reference back to this later. We're going to most likely need these. You're going to need to look back at these because you maybe won't understand some of it until you look back at this picture as we move on. First thing we want to do is we want to sketch the corner view of a rectangular prism, three units high, six units long, and four units wide. We're going to make, if you want to think of it as being, a Kleenex box. The first thing we start with is the three units high. You'll notice here I've drawn a segment that covers three units. Then it says six units long, so I'm going to go diagonally six units long. From the corner, I go back one, two, three, four, five, six. And then from there, I'm going to go up three and then connect, connect back to the origin or the original line to make my three by six looking shape. Then I need four units wide, so I need to go back to that original line that I drew, my three units high, and go four units to the left. Connect that up, three units high, and once again come back to the beginning. There's the basic shape of our rectangular prism. What we need to do now is to complete it. If you remember, the diagonal here on the left side is four units. That means the diagonal in the back corner would also be four units. Then the line that's missing should be six units long because that's how long the object is. We've now drawn our shape, which is three by six by four. Now if you wanted to or needed to, you could put in the dotted lines. I've drawn in the three units high for the object in the back corner. And then we need to connect that up to the front corner. And lastly, we go four units the other direction. And we've drawn our shape. The dotted lines are used for lines that we cannot see, but we know exist. However, for the actual rectangular prism, if we were drawing the corner view, the dotted lines are not necessary. Sketch the corner view of a triangular prism that's three units high, legs of four, and seven units. Pause this recording and see if you can do this one without following along with me. Then restart the recording and see if your object looks the same as mine. Here is your triangular prism. If you have trouble drawing it, I'll trace back over how I actually went through the construction. I started by creating the corner view of three units high. I created this segment here, which was three units high. Next, I knew I needed legs of four and seven. I went four in one direction and seven in the other direction. Now finally, I just knew that I needed to have a triangle, which meant I needed to connect up my height back to the corner, create a four on the back side, a three tall, and finally, 
the two sevens, which made up the remainder of the triangular, triangular prism. There's your triangular prism. A net. A net is a 2D figure that can be folded to make a 3D figure. Or thinking of it the other way around, it's a 3D figure which has been unfolded or cut along the lateral edges and laid flat open into a 2D shape. Here we have an object called a tetrahedron. It's a special type of figure and we'll discuss that a little bit later, but the key part I want you to notice is what this shape looks like. It's made up of four triangles connected together and now watch on the right hand side. Notice we have a tetrahedron on the right hand side or the triangular prism on the right hand side. Watch what happens as I play this little short video. The sides fold down and now it's a flat object with four triangles. If we look back at the original, that's how many triangles were in the original. So that figure on the right is called a net. Let's look at a cube. A cube you're pretty familiar, pretty familiar with. A cube is a six-sided object, so this would be the same as a rectangular prism. It just happens to be made up of all squares. As we look at the cube, on the right-hand side, as we look at the net, we have the cube that, as we open the edges up, we end up with six squares. That's good because there were six faces on the original object. We need to have the same amount of faces or same amount of two-dimensional areas in the net that we had faces on the original object. The original object had six faces, so we need six faces for our net of the cube. I'll show you that one more time. Let's look at one more. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's the dodecahedron. It's a pretty complex looking object, but it's just a 12-sided object. They're all made up of pentagons, which, now granted I wouldn't ask you to actually create this one and to be able to draw this one, but it does give a good example of what's going on when we talk about the net of an object. Watch as the net is unfolded from our example on the right hand side. Notice the first three are down. Now we have two more, two more, and two more. If we count them up, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different objects or twelve different pentagons here, which is great because the original object was a twelve sided dodecahedron. So that's a net. It's a 2D figure that can be folded into a 3D figure. We'll see in a little bit why nets are really useful for what we're studying here. Here we go. We want to draw the net of the rectangular prism, three units high, legs of four and seven. I jumped back here to show you this is a bit what that shape would look like. Here's your rectangular prism. Now we're actually going to try and draw the net of that same prism. Well, let's think about it. We have three units high, legs of four and seven. So maybe we should try and draw that quick here. So I know I have legs of four and seven. I'll put my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. My four here. It's three units tall. And then we'll just continue on making the object. And this might help you. You may or may not want to draw this on your own. That one's actually going to go off my paper, but that's okay. The key thing here is to understand what we're trying to do. For the net, we're actually trying to create all of these faces but then in a two-dimensional representation instead of in the three-dimensional. Let's start with, I'll put a red line on it, this face right here. It's a three by four. 
All that means is that we need a 3 by 4 on our dot paper. I'll start at the bottom of my paper and I'm going to make a 3 by 4. I'm going to go across 3 and I will make it 4. Across 4 and then up by 3 and down. We've created our first corner of our rectangular prism. We have a 3 by 4 right here. Now as I look at it, I notice that this 3 by 4 has a 4 by 6 connected onto it. If I go back down to here, I notice I have my 4, which is the top side. I have a 4 right there, which would represent the 4 right there. So I'm going to continue on with the 4 by 6. I need to add 6 here. Four by six. There's our shape. Going back to that shape, I'll, I notice that if I continue around to the top side, I have another four by six up there. So I'm going to add another 4 by 6 on the end. Whoops, I said that wrong. It was supposed to be 4 by 3, not 4 by 6. Better shrink that up by 1. So, so far we've created both ends of the box and one of the tops. Now I'm going to have to create the bottom, so I'm going to need one more 4 by 6 which would connect up to it. So I'll connect my segments to go 6 more off of here. I now have the four faces. All I have left is the left side and the right side. As I look at this long stretch, I'll put a little blue strippy on it. It's a 6 by 3. That means off of one of my 6's, I need to create a 6 by 3 rectangle. Here's one of my 6's. I'm going to go 6 by 3. And then off of the other side, I'll do the same thing. And I've now created the net of my object. Notice I had to change it to by 6 instead of by 7. The 7 didn't quite fit on my paper, so we'll need to make that adjustment on yours as well. Now, why that net is, is useful is because we can use that to calculate surface area. It's the area of the surface of a three-dimensional shape, surface area. So find the surface area of the rectangular prism, which is 3 units high in legs of 6 and 4. So I changed that 7 to a 6 there so that we have the right measurements. So we're going to create the surface area, find the surface area of that object. Well we just drew the net of that object. So all we need to do is actually cal calculate the areas of all of these faces. And that's really easy because we've learned about rectangles before. All we need to do is length times width. This top rectangular area is a 4 by 6 or 24. The next one down is a 3 by 4 or 12. Continuing on, we have a 3 by 6, which is 18. A 3 by 6, which is 18. A 4 by 6, which is 24. And lastly, a 3 by 4, which is 12. To get our surface area, all we need to do is add up these numbers. We have 24 plus 12 plus 24 plus 12 plus 18 
plus 18. And we'll have our surface area. We have a total surface area of 108. So we just answered our question. It's 108 units squared. Lateral area. Lateral, lateral area is very similar to surface area. The difference is it's the area of the lateral faces. To find the lateral area, calculate the surface area of a shape without the bases. So lateral area does not count the bases. And remember, the bases are the two objects that are parallel to each other. Draw the net and find the surface area of the right triangular prism. Well, we don't necessarily need the dot paper in order to do these. We can actually just draw these on paper. What I'd like to do is start with the biggest object. The biggest object is the 13 by 8 rectangle. That makes up that front face. It's 13 tall and 8 wide. So I just did the front face. Off of that, I have two triangles. And then I have another rectangular base on the bottom. So let's see what else we can draw and make up the rest of the shape. As we look at the back off of this rectangle, we have an 8 by a 5 back there. That would be the piece right here, 8 by 5. So we have two of ours. Now we have the front triangle, which as I look at it, we're missing a piece, aren't we? We know that this is 13, but we don't know the value of x. Do you know how we could figure that out? Hopefully you realize that you have a right triangle there. And using the right triangle formula, or the Pythagorean theorem, we can replace that x with a 12. Pythagorean theorem told us that. Now we know the length and width of our last rectangle, which is the bottom. It is an 8 by 12. Now I also know how to make my two triangles. They're 12 by 5 by 13. 12 by 5 by 13. We actually don't need the 13 because that's going to be our hypotenuse and we don't need that for the area of a triangle. Now we just need to calculate these areas. We have a 5 by 8, which is 40. We have a 13 by 8 which is 234. We have an uh, 8 by 12, which is 96. And we have a 1 half base height for these triangles. Base is 5, height is 12. 1 half base height would give me 30. And they're going to be the same. To get our surface area for this question, we would just add up 40 plus 234 plus 96, plus 30, plus 30, and get 430 units squared. They take a little time, but they're not too complicated. The last thing is to just understand two types of prisms. First off, we have right prisms. A right prism simply is a prism in which the lateral edges meet the base at a right angle. We have right angles in the corners here. They come down at nice right angles. The lateral edge meets the base at a right angle, meaning that this blue line that I'm drawing in is an altitude or the height of the prism. Bases and lateral faces are perpendicular. That's our right prism. Then we have our oblique prism, which in which the bases and the lateral faces are not perpendicular. We do not have right angles in these corners. They are just angles. They are not right angles. That's the end of this lesson. Make sure if you have any questions, please bring them in, and I'll help you out.